Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 263 of the Iron Coop Fights Movies. This episode is available on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and hosted by SoundCloud. Check out another, my graphic novel. The ebook is $2.99. Link in the description. I'm Keir, your host. With me on the show today are my co hosts, Emerson. You what's up, dogs? And Everett. Hey, what's up? This week, the team reviews X Men Days of Future Past. Convinced that mutants pose a threat to humanity, Dr. Boulevard Trask develops the Sentinels, enormous robotic weapons that can detect a mutant gene and zero in on that person. In the 21st century, the Sentinels have evolved into highly efficient killing machines. With mutants now facing extinction, Wolverine volunteers to go back in time and rally the X-Men of the past to help change a pivotal moment in history and thereby save their future. I'm going to explain our rating system. On this show, we give the titles that we have watched a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title that we would highly recommend, while a draw is a title we didn't love but recognize others may appreciate. A loss means we do not recommend the title. Merson, you want to go first? Sure. So um, I said I liked this movie. I hadn't seen it in a bit. It was better than I remember it being even, despite remembering really liked it. I love the tone of this movie. I love the scenes. I like that it takes itself mostly seriously. I think it only, I'm trying to remember. I feel like it had one scene kind of like first class where I was like, that was cringy as fuck. It was when the toad guy licks like the gun away or something. Yeah, there was, no, I think it was, I think it was that whole scene. Like the guy with tattoos is like doing two guys in this. Yeah, I I was like, yeah, I just registered that's who that was, Everett, too. And I was like, oh, shit, it's him. Um, But I really like this movie. I think it's it's fantastic and amazing. And it blows my mind that they went from, you know, a decent movie to a better movie going first class to Days of Future Past. And then they just I don't know, some somewhere along the line, something fell apart as they went forward. Um, Kia, you had mentioned this when we reviewed X3, but I think it's really cool how they have that continuity between Trask and X3 and Trask in this movie. Like, that's super cool. Like, I really like that subtle nod to being able to change your race in the future. And, He's a uh, mutant. <laughs> I like Peter Dinklage in this role. I do like him. It's just funny that, like, <laughs> that we're supposed to believe these are this is the connection of the universe. Is. And it's like, yeah, yeah, he got some surgery done. Um, but yeah, I, I do. I think it was an awesome movie and it's a hard win for me. Ever? Yeah. yeah, I'm going to give it a win as well. I think this is a great movie. I think it's got a great design. I think, like, as a side note, if they ever made figures of those Sentinels, I would buy like three of them immediately because that would look an, um, amazing in an X Men cabinet. But yeah, this movie's got great design. It's got great acting. I think all the casting is perfect, especially blending the two generations of X-Men together. I think they work really well. Um, this movie is not without its flaws, in my opinion, though, because Emerson kind of just touched on it. You have to envision, I think, X-Men First Class, this movie sort of, and the next few as a soft reboot. Because if you go back and you try to connect them to the original three, the inconsistencies just break the entire watch there are so many changes that nobody brings up that, you know, are just shoved under the rug. It's a, it's a little hard to sort of see past that, but beyond that, I think everything else is great, especially, um, and I'll, I say this about some movies, the soundtrack is phenomenal. Like the extended score for this movie, I listen to it in my car all the time. Still, there's like a selection of like four songs. If you play them in a row um, that go through that, like final fight sequence, like when they're skipping back and forth between two time periods, that's phenomenal. I listen to that all the time. So yeah, I think, uh, I'll give you the names of the list. I'll pull them up in a few minutes. But uh, yeah, I think this movie's great. Uh, I give this a, uh, I think at one point I, I rated this in my top 10. Um, I would say that it's not in my top 10 anymore. Interesting. I give it a draw. Really? Why is that? Um, probably because it's stupid. <laughs> I don't agree. I don't agree. So Mystique turning into Mystique when she's supposed to be Trask and then having to suddenly switch back. That's her being smart or. You talking about the scene when she's in the office? Yeah. Yeah, And she's crying. I mean, that's the same same thing she does in every movie. What's why is that different? And they've all been pretty stupid. (laughs) Yeah. But I don't. So that's what brought this movie to a No, there's just it's stupid all around. Like it it has it has a couple of cool moments. They're not nearly as cool as I remember them. And I thought that the writing was better, but it's not. I don't know what I was remembering. 
and um I, it's okay like i gave I, it a draw okay i don't agree i thought it was sick i really enjoyed it really quickly did you guys watch the original cut or the rogue cut so i watched the original what? on disney plus but i have seen the Rogue cut uh-huh and i haven't pulled up what the differences are yeah i watched I, the original i watched the original too but uh I'm I'm wondering because I've never seen the road cut. I so. don't remember. I, I mean, I, I used to like this movie a lot, so I, I don't really remember. But there's an X-Men memorial in the future mm-hmm. of people that died. Um, yeah. And then there there's a debate about saving the world for some reason. <laughs> um, Bishop is still annoyed about it. Uh, Iceman and Kitty Pride have a side conversation about the risk she is taking to send Wolverine back to the future. By the way, which mutation allows her to send him back in time? Yeah, that kind of just popped up out of nowhere from X3, like from going from running through walls to sending people back in time. She goes through walls, and then now she's sending people mentally back in time. I honestly, I was just like, eh, whatever. I'll hand wave it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could have hand waved everything so far. Um, that's one of that's like in that list of inconsistencies that I was talking about. Like, you kind of got to not think about it. Yeah, that's always a sign of a good movie. (laughs) Um, uh, Wolverine's Arrival. Uh, I actually liked that he gets rid of the girl he slept with the night before. Okay. I liked that scene. That scene wasn't bad. Um, Yeah. So Hank has a cure for the mutant gene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He developed a cure for the mutant gene that fixes your legs. I thought it was more of uh, like he has a serum to fix his leg, but as a side effect, it like inhibits his mutant powers. Yeah, because it's like it treats his DNA, doesn't oh, it? Oh, so yeah, so it, it like the the serum is to fix his legs. Yeah, yes. And then what serum is he taking that cures himself? That's a side effect. It doesn't do it. It's not his primary thing. But it's it's a little so, weird though. It's a little so convoluted. He has a cure for his mutation, and he's done it to two mutants. That's a but cure. He didn't do it to anyone else. Yeah, it's, he has a cure and he's just sitting on it. It is a little convoluted because on one little... hand, on one hand, I, they say like <laughs> yeah. he wanted the, the use of his legs back, but it also inhibits his mutant power. So you'd think that it was for his legs first and it just happened to inhibit his powers. But at the same time, they go through this big thing where he's like in a depression about all of his students getting drafted to Vietnam. So you'd think that he'd want to get <laughs> yeah. rid of his powers. So it, it, I don't, it's, it's very convenient that it's a dual purpose. I'm talking about the fact that he also was able to cure himself. I'm talking about Hank. Oh, okay. Oh. I misunderstood what you were saying. I thought you were saying, but it also cured Professor's powers. I was like, what are you talking about? No, he um, cured himself and another mutant. But he Two. still can turn into the... the yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. inhibits. It doesn't like cure it. But it doesn't matter. He, it's the same conversation of, hey, I don't want my powers anymore. He do, he's done it in 1973. See what I mean by inconsistencies? Like why they don't bring these things up? See what I mean by the movie Stupid and Bizarre? I mean, I don't disagree with you, but I also, I'm going to be honest, I didn't care. I was just like, eh. Yeah, I've heard that a lot about Star Wars. That's um, true, but I'm just yeah. being honest. Like, I thought it was sick. Like I like it's the not score. sick. I'll, I'll say that. It, no, it was sick. You can't deny that the final battles. The final battle was sick. You cannot deny. Not that. as good as I remember it. It's not really a final battle. It's just Magneto bringing a stadium down. No, I'm talking about the future, like the last stand. Oh, the real last stand. I don't even care about that. That was just Why like not? filler for me. That was. I loved that. I their loved deaths watching are that. meaningless. Yeah, but I uh, did you expect their deaths to have meaning going in? You've seen this before. Their deaths aren't that meaningless. They're, I think they're a good. They don't they're a good mean way anything. Of, they're if, a good if, way of showing what happens if, like, the people in the past fail. Like that's their future. Like, like that's real stakes right there. Everybody dies. The whole planet gets wiped out. Then how come the ending is another like the mutants are our friends and <laughs> they abandon all the weaponized like decisions that they were going to make and it, it's. That's fair. They, they didn't save anything. Well, I mean, they, the are, state, they are always doomed. The president, but... They are always doomed. No, they're always doomed. Magneto just fucking almost killed the president. They are doomed. 
this is it makes no sense. It's it's one step forward, three steps back. I'm using the same the president, same ending as the Magneto last almost end. kills the entire cabinet. Yeah, it's same the same end. ending as the last end. And you guys are saying it's like sick or whatever. Well, I'm the one saying that. Yeah, but I, I like the movie. Gave it a win. There I, was a time I, I, I like the movie, too. but I'm watching it now and I'm like, I can't believe that it's the same ending as Last Stand. The, in the newspaper, the mutants save us. We decided not to attack them anymore. Really? Yeah, I mean, I understand. Really? I think that I think the thing is though that I just count this movie as like it has no connection to the previous ones or the ones that come after, despite what it is. Because none of it like makes sense. It, it, it has no connection to the wider story. It's just a film. It's like, all right. Oh, yeah. And then the whole, like, Quicksilver is Magneto's son. Yeah, but they don't really try to push that on you. I honestly thought movie. that was, like, a fine, funny reference. I thought that was funny. That's what well, it that's, was supposed to yeah, be. Yeah, it was supposed movie. to be a reference. It wasn't supposed to be, like, a full thing. They retconned it to be that in the next movie. Yeah. Um, so we see Wanda Maximoff, whatever. Uh, Nixon has an F bomb. Oh, wow, really? Iceman reveals Rogue's location. Um, due to the injuries Kitty sustained by Wolverine, almost losing control, Iceman proposes a plan to get someone who can take over for her. He suggests finding Rogue so he can take Kitty's powers. Didn't she take the cure? The next, yeah, three? but it, remember, That's the, why the, the cure was temporary. But the cure was temporary, remember. I remember Magneto got his powers back. Yeah. Bobby reveals that they attempted to get her back in the past, but security is too heavy for them. She's she's located in Cerebro. Why would she be there? I have no idea. They've taken they've taken over the house and, and they're holding rogue there. Okay. Um, Beast asks Wolverine about his future. We've seen that. Um it was in the battle, but I guess he does it in Logan's room. A similar response, noting that Beast isn't alive anymore. Uh, Mystique visits Beast at X Mansion. It doesn't uh, she like stab him or something, or is that like another thing? They in the movie they learn that she's traveling to Washington D.C. using Cerebro. Um, this results in Mystique coming to the X Mansion and running into Beast on accident. What? She seduces Hank. Okay, <laughs> that's what I want to see. Magneto and Iceman rescue Rogue. I remember that. They just go into the. They just like fight the enemy. I've there. never even. I didn't even know there were two versions. This is it all. This, if I remember correctly, this also explains how the Sentinels find them at that monastery. Yeah. Um, it might it might show it in the next. Iceman races to Rogue, places his hand on her face so she can steal some of his life. After she's awake, Magneto and Iceman begin escorting Rogue out of the X Mansion. Iceman dies saving Rogue. Um, the Sentinels killed the X Men member in the same fashion as this theatrical cut, but it happens earlier. Mystique destroys Cerebro in in the past. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Okay. Rogue replaces Kitty Pride. Damn, she looks old. Um, yeah, so it's just so anytime there was like her hands, it was actually Rogue. I don't know. So so wait a minute, like how would that work? Because Rogue only like takes the powers temporarily. So would she have to keep leeching off Kitty Pride over and over and over again, or and like wouldn't that kill her eventually? Listen, Darth Vader goes view, and everyone's happy. That's all you got to know, okay? Now, <laughs> how the Sentinels find the X-Men team. Um, the mission to save Rogue concluded with the Sentinel arm getting stuck on the futuristic Blackbird. <laughs> okay. That's how they get discovered. All right. Yeah, they track it back. Young Professor X talks to a veteran, uh, asks him how he got in the wheelchair. It was friendly fire. Okay. Post credit scene puts Trask in jail. Oh yeah, they put him in the same jail cell that Magneto was. Why would in. he be in jail? Because he sold the secrets to the Vietnamese or tried to. Is that why? 
Isn't there yeah. a newspaper clipping that says he's going to jail for yeah. selling secrets? Selling military secrets. Yeah, it seemed kind of like kind of a weird thing because it seems like the president is quite upset that Magneto was able to take over the Sentinels. But then the newspaper seems to be like about an arms deal. Like, all right. By the way, what mutation allows uh, Magneto to control the circuitry of the Sentinels? Yeah, no, I mean, I have no idea. I'm going to be honest. I got <laughs> home and I sense. watched this. I watched this on, what was it, Tuesday after work. I just got home and put it on. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Maybe this, maybe if I watch movies when I get home at the end of the day, like kind of not paying attention, I'll enjoy I enjoy it. movies when I watch them late at night for some reason. Like I, I enjoy them more. But but this is just like, you know, so while you I guys... don't disagree with the things you're saying. The problem is I sat down and I was like, yeah, it's cool. Like they're killing them. Like my I, my what I used to think was so great about this movie was Magneto becoming Magneto at the end, betraying his friends, um, bringing down the arena, sending Wolverine to his death. By the way, how long was he in the water? Yeah. Also, I didn't remember that it wasn't. Uh, striker who takes him out i thought it was actually striker who takes him out and like the yeah point that shit is, doesn't make any sense the it, point is no, that yeah. it's gonna happen to him. i think it's pretty cool like they they throw him in the water he's there for way too long which uh you know it doesn't make sense but you kind of hand wave that then you go oh striker's got him i guess that's how he gets striker it's kind of weird that they would just leave wolverine out like that because they specifically say what about logan and like the answer is apparently, I don't know. <laughs> and then, um, and then once you're like, okay, how is Stryker exactly going to contain Logan, especially when he doesn't know who the fuck he is and he's like out of his mind? That seems like they should have some type of, like, I mean, isn't he gonna like recover within seconds, or is he dead? Like, either way, it could only be one of those. I don't know which one it is, but I don't see how this plan worked. And then undermine the entire thing by making it mystique, which makes you go away. So what the fuck does that mean? Once again, high class storytelling. <laughs> I don't disagree, but I did like I'm being 100% honest. When I sat down, I was just like, yeah, this is cool. I enjoyed this. Like, I mean, maybe you were expecting it to be good. I was. And I was like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't remember this being so dumb. I don't know. Usually when I have high expectations, I get let down, but I was like, oh, this is a good movie. And I was like, this is, I don't know. I really like the fights with the Sentinels. I like that people are getting killed. But he doesn't, he can't control the electricity. What the fuck? No. And I agree with you. Yeah. That is weird that he's like, he can give them voice commands. Yeah. He's like, like, do what you're made for. And it just goes off and Um, kills things. But what I'm saying is that. Wait, wait, wait. Let me ask you this. How come the Sentinel doesn't want to kill him because he's a mutant? It does try to kill him. But he stops it. Yeah. How? He takes it apart. No, the one that's like he's giving orders to is like. Oh, that right one? At... I have no idea. <laughs> okay. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't know. Sense. As I said, what I like about this movie, and you're going to be like, it doesn't matter because it undermines the whole thing. I like watching the people die. And you're going to say it doesn't matter. But to be honest, this whole series at this point doesn't matter. I, will, I like watching the people die, except I don't even know who half of them are. That's yeah, because half of them are unknowns. They're released, like introduced in this movie. Yeah, so it doesn't like not, Bishop, Hotspot, Blink. They're all they're all new. It's not exactly the Avengers End Game out there. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's yeah, no, I agree. People, but I, like, I honestly, I had more fun watching this than I think I would watching Avengers End Game right now. I've been, I, 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 I rewatched uh, those. Those are, those are still fun movies. I found it kind of interesting seeing Professor X and Magneto in the future in a place where like they're like two of the most powerful mutants on Earth are rendered completely useless by these like massive sentinels. Magneto was kind of wasted in the final fight. Um, he the only thing he could do was control metal, and since they're not metal, he got and then he got fucked up. He got uh, he got impaled or whatever. I like the one line they have uh, all the years spent fighting each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. I like when it doesn't make a ton of sense, but I like when past Xavier goes through Logan to like talk to current Xavier. That sort of makes sense, I guess, like a mental connection. But um, so my my whole thing is like, I don't really know how to make this movie better because the things that they need to happen are not possible. There's not there's not a mutant that could control the Sentinels electrically. And 
like I, I mean, I guess you could cut out some of the stupid shit like Striker be, being Mystique or something. Like, yeah, you could cut some of that out. It doesn't really make the movie better. It's just like there's just less weirdness around it. But I, it's just a bizarre story. So you definitely have to shut your brain off, which is why I gave it a draw. But I was not like pumped up after watching this. And if I if I had had expectations, like had, having never seen this and gone into the movie and like really looked at like none of this shit makes sense, I think I would have been very disappointed. <laughs> I don't think I would have given it a draw. Hmm. Why does she turn back into Mystique when she's being in his office? I'm, pre- I'm assuming there's cameras in there. I mean, I guess one would assume, but. I mean, do you want the real reason or do you like, because I know the real reason, but I don't know like the in-universe reason. I'm sure there is no in-universe reason. Yeah, the real reason is they're like, we need to remind the audience that she's Mystique and that like, we need to like connect the two so it's not just her acting or bringing Peter Dick. And they keep showing her eyes, which is like her eyes flashing when she's morphed. Yeah. She like in X Men the... One, when there's a media thing where it shows her eyes and nobody questions it, despite the fact <laughs> that it's on public TV, she has to turn back into Mystique because Peter Dinklage is too short to reach the files that she's looking for. Maybe. And there were like there was like the wing from Angel in there. Well, that was uh, like, was like that. Is, isn't that the vault? Yeah, that's the vault that you're talking about, right? Yeah, isn't that's when she goes into the office? No, no, no. You're thinking of when she infiltrates Trask's. Like little vault to find the files of the. Isn't like, that what he's are. talking about? There's those are two scenes. The one you're the one you're thinking of the wing is when Magneto goes to get his helmet back. He sees the coin. He sees the wing, and he sees the Havoc's chest piece in the like the Pentagon vault. What he is talking about is when Mystique goes to get the information on where Trask is going to go meet the Vietnamese. Uh, she sneaks into his private little quarter area, like that little info vault, and she finds the dossiers on all the mutants from the last movie that got killed. So, like, Azazel's dead, Banshee's dead, Angel's dead. I thought there was a wing in the vault. Huh? All right. Maybe I didn't pay much attention to this. She starts crying, and the assistant walks in, and he, she's I remember like, why, that. Why are you crying, Trask? He's like, oh, no reason. I remember that. I do remember I that. I still but. can't get over... Okay, how does she give birth if she has no genitalia? When did she give birth? You mean in universe? Is it Nightcrawler her kid or something? Nightcrawler. Is yeah, her but do kid. they ever do they ever acknowledge like is that canon to the movies? I don't know. Isn't it canon like in terms of her the biological abilities? It's it's implied sort of. I know it's, it's canon in the comics. I'm just asking. Do they how, ever? How does actually, she give birth even in the comics? She has to turn into a woman. I'm, one would assume, yes. And whose yes. DNA is? It's still a Zazel in the comics, the, the Red Demon from First. No, class. I know, but like if she's a, if she's like a different woman, whose DNA is that? Well, she's still the same inside. She doesn't change. Like it's because remember when she becomes Wolverine, she can make the claws, but they're not really the claws. Yeah, I'm guessing. Well, okay, that's actually a good notion to bring up because. How far does that go? Is it just look? Because if it's just look, then she wouldn't pass any DNA scanners. Because then she'd have to have the actual. Do we DNA ever see of the her person. pass a DNA scanner? I, I mean, yeah, sort we don't of. know. What are her clothes like? What are the clothes made? Of? That that was one that, yeah. like, to be honest, you brought that up in the past, Key, and I didn't really care. I was like, I don't know, whatever. But in this one, like, at multiple times, like, you watch the clothes generate and degenerate, and I was like, what the fuck. Yeah, so like, like, does that so mean like if, if she like, has a if scarf she gets and like some like dust on her like lapel and you're like, oh, let me like, so are you like, is that sexual assault? Well, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, if she has a scarf and you take the scarf off and she throws it away, is it just like dead skin now or is that like part of her arm? Yeah, it is. Because <laughs> they do that. <laughs> Can in the you later imagine movies, like... she puts the scarf away and like it ends up in like a like a like a thrift shop? Someone like buys it, they're like wearing it, it just that's turns how into they an get arm. her DNA and now yeah. it's are born. I, I think they sort of realize that in like the last, the next two movies, like uh, Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix, because you see her change and her clothes don't change at all. It's just her skin at that point. Or uh, the vice versa of that is you see her change and she's wearing a completely different outfit underneath. So um, I heard so, I do not know. Part of me, I'll, I'll like, put it out. You know, I'm, I'm watching them in the future and their mutations, uh, if that's what you want to call them. And I'm like, would it be better off if they Had were just. Men. If they were just superheroes, 
Like, what if they were just people who got powers and now they go to a special school? Would that be better? But then I was thinking you wouldn't have the whole, like, they hate mutants thing. You wouldn't have that. Also, you'd have to come up with some type of story for how each person got their powers, which is not that hard. But they all have superpowers. These are not mutations. What is Blink? Yeah, you know what? Blink can create I think portals. I, yeah, <laughs> I came home from work. I was tired. I sat down and just watched it. And I think my mind was off before I even turned it on. Because yeah. this is the type of thing I usually jump on. Like, can you even tell me what Bishop's powers really are? Because I have no clue. Bishop? Half of them revolve around that gun <laughs> he carries. Bishop? Bishop's the guy, the like the guy. black guy with the, the M tattoo on his That's face. That's all he is to you guys, you fucks. In the I, you original could have comic, it. Bishop is the one who gets sent back. That's how yeah. I know him. In this movie, I have no clue what he does. Like his, like it, from what it looks like, it's like he he takes power or something and uses it to fire out of that gun he carries. But Wait, is he yeah. supposed to be the leader of the X Men? No, he. No. That's just like a contingent. Didn't the rogue of cut say Bishop, who's the leader, has like an argument or something? He is. Um, I don't know. He's he's like in charge of like the the kid squad or something. The kitty squad. Didn't it said somewhere Bishop? Yeah, wait. Um, Bishop is concerned about the risk they are taking. He isn't too fond of the idea of altering the timeline. Blink and Sunspot. Who's Sunspot? Sunspot's the guy that's like the fire guy. The fire guy. Oh, okay. (laughs) Share Bishop's hesitation, but Professor X ultimately convinces them to risk it all for the world to get a second chance. Wait, go to the, the previous paragraph before this? Wait. Um, yeah, it is led by Bishop. Why the fuck is he in charge? How about Wolverine has no idea why Professor X and Magneto are trying to find them? Like, mm. they know. Magneto and Professor X know what they want to do with Kitty. But he doesn't, and neither does Storm. They're like, this is news to them. It's because yes. of exposition. Yeah. It's like, you guys don't know? <laughs> Yeah, so there would have been a scene where Wolverine's like, so what are we doing? And he's like, yeah, you'll see. Even in the apocalyptic like, right. future. <laughs> where are the humans? We only see them in the, like, and we, like, see is a strong well, word. A large portion of them got, also got exterminated, I think. But we only Why? see because the mutant, the, the sentinels imprison people whose DNA will lead to mutations. Yeah. Okay. That's said yeah. in the movie. Um, yeah, but... If you have mutant killing machines, do you really need to eliminate anybody who might I mean, carry they the gene? seem to choose to. The only time we see humans in the future that I can remember is there's some guards in the guard towers when they're in that like camp. Yeah, there's like some technicians and stuff. But uh, answer me this, Emerson. Didn't you tell me once that if a person were to live long enough, they would eventually develop cancer because all cancer is is your cells mutating? Yeah. yeah. So technically, wouldn't every single one of these people eventually down the line somewhere in their <laughs> like their lineage <laughs> Where is develop a mutation? Like, wouldn't everyone on Earth develop a mutation if they're like the next stage of human? Yeah, evolution? but I don't think. Yeah, they I don't, don't think count. cancer yeah. is a mutation. The only, no, I'm, what, I'm, I'm using that as an example. Like, don't you think the Sentinels will target everyone because they think that everyone might be able to lead to mutants one day? Probably. No, but that that, that type of mutation is just cancer. What they the, the mutations that they're concerned about are creating portals somehow that works <laughs> there's definitely a cutoff where it's it's definitely not mutation it's magic at this point like yeah, yeah. controlling the weather portals I I said that last week yeah yeah i'm agreeing with you i think doesn't it get more magic-y in the next ones too yeah the, i'll uh, be honest i'll be happy when we're done with this shit yeah i'm, I'm not excited, excited for, i'm not excited for the next two i'm excited i don't remember anything i like the dark phoenix opening scene I remember After getting that, what? No, I remember getting very angry that they show off the Phoenix powers in Apocalypse, and then they act like she didn't have them in uh, in Dark Phoenix, like that it came from space. I don't, whatever. Just do you want to know the only two scenes I remember from the next two movies? What in Apocalypse? I have a vivid memory that there's like some moment where like some ancient Egyptians somehow defeat apocalypse which doesn't really track and then it happened i think and then um in fucking dark phoenix 
I remember there's an alien walking in the forest that's like pretty scary. And then there's also that moment when they play chess at the end and like the camera pans up and there's a phoenix in the sky. <laughs> I, I, we, for, we didn't really talk that much about Quicksilver in this movie. That's a cool scene. Yeah. Yeah. I like that scene. Um, don't they rip that scene off and yeah both they, of the next they, ones? they do it at, well they do it one good time in the next movie and then in a uh, in dark phoenix they try to do it and then they kick him out for the rest of the movie he's literally like in one scene and he's just not there anymore yeah, yeah i like that scene that was good in this um i liked it I, I feel like i've seen it maybe too many times now yeah but, um, like it's not it definitely doesn't have the same impact anymore especially with the movies that have come out since and all the effects that we've seen, it, but it, it's cool. This is um, actually a, a good question um, that I remember someone else brought up. So we've got Quicksilver. We've got the flash. Well, he's a pedophile now or something, but we've got the flash. Okay. So these are two speedsters. There's another speedster that we've seen. Isn't there that we've seen? You like, what do you mean? Like in Marvel or in DC or yeah, there's like some other movie, but there's another, basically I'm asking, do you guys think it's more effective when you have these like slow-mo moments or would you prefer to have like just super speed? You don't know what's happening. Like I like the slow mo. Yeah, but I like the slow mo. It's so hard to write around these characters. It is so hard. Like he can break into the Pentagon easily. What can't he do? He could have stopped the whole thing in the in Washington. Yeah, and he actually could have gotten there without even being there too. Yeah. So anyway. Um, do you have a fight of the week, Emerson? No, I didn't come up with one for this. Okay. Uh, I watched Kamala Khan, though. You watched both episodes? Yep. So let's talk about that. Okay. What would you guys um, think? So did you watch it, Everett? Uh, I haven't gotten the chance yet, but okay. go ahead and talk in spoilers. Um, so uh, I see why you like the first episode. Like, things are happening. I am lukewarm on it overall right now. It seems like, like it's good. There's like stuff's happening, but I also don't really see where it's leading to yet. Like it's difficult for me. And then the last couple minutes of the second episode, I was like, what the fuck? Like, what the? Well, I I mean, that's, that's shows for you. I know, but did you like it as much? Yeah. Two episodes in, I, I felt like there were, Anytime she uses her powers, I feel like the show gets a little weird. Mm. Like, like it's not it's not great powers for um, like TV. It's yeah. Weird. Also, some of the CGI when she's practicing on the roof was not yeah. good. Yeah, they're, they're definitely struggling there. Um, having said that, two episodes in and two episodes of plot, and that is a two for two record. That has that's a brand new record. Nobody's gone two episodes of plot in a row. Nobody. <laughs> wow. Um, so there you go. I think that this show, I'm assuming Captain Marvel is going to make an appearance at some point. Um, I don't know. I think this show, interestingly, interestingly, once again, made her more likable without existing. Because like, you know, when she has that moment at the start where she talks about how Captain Marvel like shows up and like fucks everybody over. At first I was like, she didn't but i was like okay yeah she, she kind of didn't it's like okay it's it's sort of giving you more idea into like how these characters are viewed i'm sure it'll be abandoned in the next show or something but it's giving you some more insight into how these like heroes are like what are they viewed as how how are they considered how do you rectify the fact that captain marvel exists alongside fucking hawkeye like so i do like that aspect of it like i remember so, one criticism of the episode was the, the kid is like dangling and she <laughs> She takes the time to switch into her Captain Marvel outfit. And like, but that's uh, like a kid thing. That's like, yeah, I, that kid would have definitely let go at that point. Like, yeah, he killed himself. He had already um, been up there for a while. I think that the Department of Damage Control, they're giving me some strong vibes of Sword and WandaVision. Like, they're just being evil for the sake of evil. I think they're trying to draw a parallel like the evil federal agency who's like racist. Um, I think that's where the parallel is going to go. And it's like, okay. Where did you see damage control? They're the guys who are fucking with her. They're at the end of episode one, where it's the two agents, the same agent from yeah. something. Um, and then, and they have DODC. 
okay. on their backs. Yeah. I mean, because aren't they just like investigating superheroes? Well, yeah, they were. And then at the end of the second episode, though, they like come up to her. They're using Stark drones. Yeah, that was interesting. They're yeah. using Stark drones. They have like pulse weapons or something. And then it, that was where I was like, this is fucking stupid. That exact moment when uh, Cam- Cameron, what's his name? Cameron, yeah. Cameron, he drives up, she gets in, and then they're like, where the fuck did she go? I was like, really, guys? Like you, you didn't see yeah. the car, or yeah. Hear the car, yeah. Um, and then I'm assuming those guys are the villains, Cameron and his mom, probably. I think, but yeah. it wasn't his mom, also his her aunt or her her grandma. I think so. That's who she's seeing in the visions, right? It seems like it's the same person or something. Yeah. yeah. But we'll see. I mean, you know what? Two episodes of plot, the best we could ask for at this point. So. Um, let's talk the dumpster fire that is Obi Wan Kenobi. I didn't oh, watch it. Oh, oh boy, I didn't really watch it either. I I skimmed through it. It was honestly just too stupid. Yeah, um, this is this is a new level of bad. So I skipped episode four because it I just didn't care anymore. And then I heard that there were flashback scenes uh, of like you know for the prequels and Anakin and Obi Wan. So I decided to check that out. Uh, about five seconds in, I couldn't be more horrified <laughs> yeah. and laughing. I'm more horrified at the delusion that people have. Yes. I'm truly astonished. People online are saying that it's bots that, that are, are that are making pro. these comments. I hate the only problem I have with that argument is everyone always accuses bots of being like the opposition. And it's like, yeah, bots do exist, but I also genuinely believe that like people I, I like don't know this. I I, can't, I don't know if I believe it like I can't imagine people how can you look at Hayden Christensen a 40 year old man playing 17 year old saggy jowls like dark circles under his eyes well if they're how watching you, it if they're just like woo it's fun man like I I, I had a good time watching they're not just saying like yeah, I don't care they're saying he looks fantastic for a 17 year old it looked pretty <laughs> bad so i think everett was it everett or kia one of you guys linked me the like fan made version it was everett yeah i, and I sent I'm you constantly it. disgusted how are you this bad at doing it as a major you're disney yeah. they don't have I an think excuse they ran out of a budget i think it was the budget yeah well crowdsource I mean, it people will do it for you they like, don't the, have to people are saying he looks good I mean, he doesn't look good. Like, you know, everyone has an opinion. No, he does not look good. I'm not saying the guy, uh, like, looks bad. He looks fine. Great for 40. He doesn't he's look not like a 17. 17. Yeah, I know. He's yeah, not he's 17. 17. And, <laughs> and from what I understand, even the plot is garbage. Oh, no. Like, the plot is from the hot CGI, garbage. For like, this, episode. this episode's hot garbage. People like, were talking about Reva's acting. Let me say right now, nominate that woman for an Oscar for doing the best she could to swing at a target that can't move and make it look like she is like, like she couldn't hit him. Like she's doing the best sell of like, ah, ah, ah. like he can't even move. She could easily like the guy can't even turn around to see her if she wanted to. At one point she gets behind him and he like, is like trying to turn. She just doesn't do anything I'm like, Oh Jesus. And then you look so, at that people like, dude, Vader is the fucking strongest we've ever seen him. Really? He looked old even in that little scene. And then so the- I'm trying to look for – there's some tweets because you're talking about bots. I've seen yeah. some people praising it, and I was trying to look for it, and I just found this meme where it's Reva being like, where were you when he was killing my friends? And Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan says, I was riding a big lizard, Reva. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's stupid. It's like um, he was fighting the war. He was ending um, the war. So yeah, okay, here I we didn't go. watch it. So you can go through like, I know there's Jesse a Jesse says, why bring Hayden back if he's just going to be in the Vader suit the whole series? Boom, bitch. Criticism's destroyed. And he has pictures of, <laughs> the CG of, of Hayden Christensen like fighting him. Uh, this person says the parallels in this episode were insane. Uh, I cannot believe we are finally getting this after 20 years, 20 years after Attack of the Clones. So they're trying to say, because Obi-Wan in in the flashback, Obi-Wan says, 
until you let go of your desire to always win, you will still be the Padawan, something like that. Which in episode four, he's like, now I am the master. And people are like, see, it closes, it, it all makes sense. But I, I'm thinking about it. So, okay, he's trying, his, pro, his issue, his issue is that he is always trying to win. It's like, and Obi-Wan is not trying to win. Okay. Because in this movie, in this episode, he decides not to fight and instead run away. By the way, does he not double cross Reva and leave her for dead? Obi-Wan? Yeah. I mean, doesn't he make like a deal to to like stay and fight with with her against Not Vader? not exactly. It's sort of it's set up like that, but in reality it's it's a ploy to get Vader to come down and lure him there. <laughs> yeah. So here's, but here's then he of, abandons her and bas- which is basically yeah, signing he, her he, death warrant. He leaves. Yeah, he here's leaves her behind. one of the trending memes. This was posted by an account called Anakin Skywalker. The new Obi Wan episode confirmed that Darth Vader just stand there, stands there, staring into space, and everyone is like, "Wow, he's such a strong, menacing yeah, man!" But he's literally exactly just it. thinking his gay little thoughts about Obi Wan. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the the beam is just like a cat. Um, so he he kind of like misleads Reva, and it's okay. Ob- so Obi Wan chooses not to fight, and that is how he wins. It's like okay. Um, sort of. So then the yeah, flashbacks are all about how he is not trying to win against Anakin, and that is Anakin's downfall is his desire to win. I mean, I think his bigger downfall was the whole like trying to save Padme from death and that whole thing. But okay, fine. Um, but how does if you go forward to episode four, where he says, "I am now the master," what has he conquered that has changed? Well, I mean, if, okay, the original reason I'm pretty sure is there wasn't supposed to be any meeting between the two of them, between Revenge of the Sith and them. So the last meeting they should have had was him getting his arms and legs cut off on Mustafar, where he got defeated. So that line would make sense for when we last met, I was but the learner. You defeated me, and now I'm the master. I'm more powerful than you. Right. That's what it's supposed might, to be, but that's what he's saying. He's like, it's been a long time. I'm the, I'm the better guy now. Yeah, you might be right about the bots, Kia, because I'm looking at some of these very pro Obi Wan posts, and it's suspicious where it's like pro Obi Wan post, pro Stranger Things post, pro Obi Wan post, pro Stranger Things post. It's like I could definitely see that like these are corporate accounts where it's, it's like yeah. you just come out and you hey, talk I've, about I've seen a couple it. negative comments about the show so far like every time I watch the show is like yeah, on, but- at midnight when it comes out and I always check Twitter after it's done for people's live reactions and some of them I've seen are like oh, Obi-Wan's a mid-tier show you know it's not great it's not perfect like I've I saw seen a stuff comment like that. on the television subreddit where someone someone they were talking about Obi-Wan might get a season two and someone was <laughs> like someone was like how can it get a season two when they don't even have a story for season one yeah that's yeah. what someone and it had like it had like 500 upvotes, but you know it's not top. I don't know. I think I think there are probably bots, but I also know that there are people out there who are like fans for the sake of being fans. Yeah, the here's Marvel the, Studios yeah. subreddit. Like, Here, well, here's the thing: those might be bots too. Now, I mean, if these are bots, why can't those be bots? I'm really yeah. thinking because you cannot look at Hayden Christensen and say he looked good. Come on, come on! Like that is really like you have to. You've got fucking blinders on. You're fucking Ray Charles sitting there, like, not watching the show, like, just being like, I love it. Here's the thing. I've, I've made the notion to you guys before that Disney really doesn't have to try that hard because they basically have a guaranteed paycheck on everything they make. These hardcore fans, including myself to some degree, will watch this stuff with bas- without a care in the world, and, you know, they'll consume it over and over again. You know, they'll constantly praise it no matter how bad it is. So they have no incentive to do good, and they have no real competition. So when it comes to stuff like this, you you bring in Obi-Wan, the promise of Darth Vader, that that ticks a lot of boxes for a lot of hardcore Star Wars fans. Not all of them, because some of them complain about the consistency between the episodes. But right. overall, it doesn't really matter. Like people will watch it, people will say it's great, or at, least, at the very least, it's mid-tier, like I said before. And then when reality, like this is the one of the lowest quality shows I think I've seen. Two episodes in a row, they've reverted back to square one, where uh Maybe like ex- excluding the first episode of the series, Obi-Wan rescues Leia. 
Leia escapes. Leia gets kidnapped. You spend half the episode seeing her getting interrogated or doing something strange. And then the other half is Obi-Wan messing around trying to find her and rescue her. And then at the end of every episode, it's them on a ship escaping off to the next pl- planet or wherever place they're going to hide. Same thing happened this episode. They're at that base. Vader invades. End of the story. They're back on a ship running away. And the next episode is the last episode. Nothing has happened so far. He's fought Vader at least once. I will say this. It happened. It's better than Mandalorian. You know, I, I mean, haven't watched Mandalorian in a while. I kind of want to go back and see how, you know, people no, 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 the real oh, red tinted is, glasses. Is it better than Book of Boba Fett? I'd say they're know. on this. They're on I the same level. I'd say. You know what? Actually, I'd say this is maybe slightly worse. People because... forget how much filler Mandalorian was. They were just eating it up. But this one actually has like effects that are interesting and worth watching. Mandalorian has nothing. It's just like a CGI monster fight, and then him just sitting around or walking, and and then they get on a ship at the end of the episode. Um. But also, um, like this episode commits like some of the biggest sins when it comes to Star Wars, in my opinion. They did, like I've said this to you both before, like a day or two ago, they did the same thing they did in Rise of Skywalker, and it was just equally as bad. In Rise of Skywalker, they have that scene where Chewie gets arrested by the First Order, and Rey tries to stop the transport and is fighting with Kylo Ren to try to force it to the ground and accidentally blows it up with force lightning. And they make you think like, oh, no, in her hubris, she killed Chewbacca. He's now dead forever. And then two minutes later, oh, it was just another ship you didn't see. This episode, you go through all the trouble of having Vader get there at the last second, watch the ship take off. And you actually have him stop it with the force, force it to the ground and rip it in half, trying to get inside. And as he finds out that no one's in there, another ship from nowhere, out of nowhere, appears out of nowhere, just goes up into the sky, escapes, doesn't try to stop it at all. And I've heard back to square one. people say that the, the second ship is visible previously, but it's not there when they're trying to fly away, but no. it is suddenly there after when he crashes. It, it appears out of thin air. Let me ask you this. For how strong Vader is, how does this compare to Magneto's uh, move in Days of Future Past? Well, I mean, like, worse. doesn't he pull the entire arena down and then pull up the, um, bunker. the safety the bunker? Room? Yeah. And then rip it open. And uh, is it better than what we saw in this show. There's, like, if I remember correctly, in Apocalypse, Magneto like controls the Earth. Yeah, he like he reverses the magnetic poles. But I'm just much. saying because this one's very similar in terms. Of he like lifts something heavy and then he rips it open. And you could you could see parallels. Like obviously, Magneto had the stronger ability scene, but it's also but, cooler. Yeah, I mean. But then you could say, like, Vader controls the Force, which is not just metal. It's, like, everything. Yeah, but but the point I think he's trying to make is, like, regardless of, like, what the actual differences are between them, they're essentially doing the same thing, but one is far more interesting. Yeah, no, Magneto did it far better. Well, I'm also saying one is extremely highly praised. Like, it's a god. Like, everyone's like, this is the greatest sequence of television I've ever seen in my entire life. It's like, well, it is just rubbery cgi at the end of the day um yeah i i don't know i i just think it's like one of the worst things i've ever seen so are all the star wars shows they're all really bad they're cw level shows yeah that's a, that's a perfect way to put it i wonder what they're gonna do for the last one because they basically done oh i the forgot to mention one? they brought back the old inquisitor from rebels he survived and he had like a two minute long rant at reva while she's on the Did ground they say back. how he lived Oh, right, because he got stabbed in the chest, and Reva also got stabbed in the chest. And Vader just leaves her there. Yeah. Did they say how he lived? Not in the show, but it, they did sort of in an interview that I saw. Because the guy, two stomachs? Yeah, the guy who <laughs> plays him, the guy who plays him, I think, was on Kimmel, and they're, they're questioning him about how he might live or die. And he's like, oh, well, Uta Powans have two stomachs, so... You know, there's always that. This shit, dude. I hate this lore. Like, we're getting into the lore. Oh, isn't he an AI? No, so, it's it's really him voicing him, I'm pretty sure. But they used an AI to assist with it. In general, there are two approaches to synthesize a voice. The one the, the, one the most well-known and would be text-to-speech like an Alexa speaker on Siri. What we do obviously isn't like that. Wait, what? They're talking about... They're using a... They're using a... De-aging VFX, deepfake, and re-speecher. 
Yeah, it basically makes it makes Wait, their voice. Uh, they don't fucking know. I can't say yes or no on James Earl Jones. Lots of secrets still with Obi Wan Kenobi, but we were uploading data packets for Obi Wan Kenobi to Skywalker Sound when the invasion of Ukraine began. Okay, I'm gonna solve this right now. Yeah, and uh, Reese Beecher is credited for Obi Wan Kenobi. Okay, whatever. Who cares? I mean, it is interesting to think that James Earl Jones is probably gonna die. I'm looking at it right now. The IMDb, it says yeah. James Earl Jones is in four episodes. Yeah, but because they're yeah. using his voice. Yeah, yeah, but it's not actually his performance. But it's an AI using I'm, his voice. That's what I'm saying. It's an assisted. I don't. I think it's actually him. I think they're just using an AI to assist it. It's the same thing they did with Luke. That's actually Luke Skywalker. You're voice. right, dude. It's actually the same exact thing as when Tupac appeared at Coachella. It's Tupac. But an AI is assisting the but image. You get that, like every. It's, it's a fucking. It's an AI. I will look this up right yeah, now. Yeah, it's not. It's not his. Vo- like it's not his performance. They it's, have it's, his data. They even say it up there. It's the same thing they did with, uh, not who, uh, Mark Hamill in The Mandalorian, where it's his voice. No, but they used a re- speecher to make it sound like his younger self, because obviously it doesn't sound like that anymore. He didn't say it's the same thing. He said that's what they did with Luke Skywalker, and that he doesn't know. For Vader, oh, so he oh, so the, why the why is this article even existed if they don't know? It's a, it, it was a what do you call them? Those fake what did, what did the clickbait? The, clickbait, yeah. Um, because the answer is like we don't know. Uh, the, looking back at Empire Strikes Back, things that worked, Boba Fett's introduction, yeah, didn't work. Luke's Jedi training. <laughs> he's, he's doing. I it. thought it was funny. It's okay. Yeah, I mean. Did work, I know, from Han Solo. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't work more 3PO comedy. Yeah, that hasn't worked in a long time. Yeah, 3PO has like worn out his welcome for a while now. Did work, the Millennium Falcon's escape. Okay. Didn't work, the apparent non-ending. Uh, I mean, it has, a, it has an ending. It's fine for us. Oh, read that last sentence, please. This is a minor niggle, but one which has definitely stood out to a lot of fans over the years. Uh, I don't know. I've never even heard that. Did work the Battle of Hoth. Yep, that was Battle cool. of Hoth was good. Didn't work Luke's new hand. I don't even remember that. It's just his. Uh, off. Yeah, but it's just his real hand. It's just they show that one scene to prove that it's robotic. And then in every other movie, it's actually there's no skin on it. It's just a robotic hand. Yeah, they might be right. Maybe you didn't need to see the new hand like immediately. Did work. I am your father. Didn't work. Showing a little too much of Darth Vader. Well, you should watch Obi Wan Kenobi because they have him just like he looks like an idiot. It's like when in the Batman movie where they they just show him like kind of standing in the room in a brightly lit room, and he looks kind of stupid. And this one, they keep showing Darth Vader just he's just like there. You have to show him cinematically. Like, if you go look at Rogue One, like, he appears through the smoke and, yeah. you know, like, very mm-hmm. cool cinematic vibes to make you be like, holy shit, Darth Vader. He can't just be a guy in a room. I know, because it just becomes stupid. Um, okay. And then I think that's it for the Star Wars stuff. Okay. So, yeah, I heard there's a lot of stuff going on with Ezra Miller recently. Former Flash co-writer Grant Morrison discusses Ezra's Ezra Miller's issues and their scrapped Flash script. Um, all I can say is that it's just not the person I know. I've heard stories just like everyone else. I just don't know. Ezra cut off contact from pretty much everyone for a while. It's not the person they were. They weren't aggressive in any way. I just thought Ezra was a super intelligent kid with so many talents. So all I can say is that I didn't see that side. So basically he's like, I haven't talked to him in a long time. Do you notice how he's saying them? Instead yeah. Of they, them there. Um, is, is your, is, do you have a thing in here about apparently he got busted for grooming or something or yeah. he got accused of grooming? Yeah. He is clearly on drugs. Um, there had been a few versions of the film. And as far as I can remember, Ezra just wasn't quite happy with what they were getting at the time. And Ezra had a lot of ideas They came to me with the book of ideas. And then we worked together. It was really just two of us. <laughs> Okay, tell me something, actually. I got paid, and it was good fun. Um, I, it didn't do the job they were looking for, which was to franchise things and set things up and bring other characters in. Oh, God, that is like the worst words you could say. It was a Flash story, so it wasn't where they wanted to go with the multiverse and stuff. 
and that was the end. So he actually gave them a Flash movie, and they, oh, this movie's going to suck. This movie's going to suck. Oh, God. L- listen to this. Franchise things and set things up and bring other characters in. I just wow. hate that. Everything. All those words. <laughs> uh, yeah. Game of Thrones sequel in the works for Jon Snow. I don't see what the fuck, what he's going to like ice farm. Like, yeah. yeah. The White Walkers are going to come back. I mean, you could do something, but will it ever be on the level of Game of Thrones? I don't well, think I, so. Uh, I don't scale. think, I think in terms of scale, but also in like, you have established, uh, I think Game of Thrones as like the show benefited from the fact that like you're being introduced to a universe you don't know when you start it. And then that was it also one it. of its one of its flaws though, because it was hard to get casuals into the whole thing. Right. But the point is that like when you bring stuff, when you try to do like, oh, this is the sequel, like it's a spin-off, I, I those fall apart. But I, I HBO mean, is I pretty good. I think at, sequel to Game of Thrones is like Game of Thrones 2. But this can't be that. So I, I can't imagine what it's going to be. I think the prequel is going to be the sequel. So if, if I could make an early bet, good, yeah. I'd say a show like this could only go one of two ways. It's either going to be him dealing with some new ancient magic beyond the wall with the wildlings and all that stuff. Or maybe Arya could come back from the new land adventures and ask for his help. And it's some weird like, threat I found the Native there. Americans. We need the genocide. <laughs> we, we discovered America. And that's when you learn that Westeros is really just Europe. They're going to bring her back. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, the Flash, Ezra Miller, deletes Instagram account as demand for Warner Brothers to take action increases. Wait, 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 wait. Read the headline, the, the sub part of the headline. After posting a series of cryptic, unhinged social media messages, which appear to be taunting authorities, <laughs> the Flash, star <laughs> Ezra Miller, has deleted their Instagram He's account. becoming the Riddler. <laughs> this, this is the villain origin story we all wanted. Miller's moves around so much that we're stuck in this legal limbo situation and we can't swerve them in any place. They're in long enough. They've been flighty. They've been avoiding service. And now there's public pressure mounting on them to make a decision which makes us very concerned about Ezra's volatile nature. So what that means is he he's moves- avoiding authorities so he's, they yeah, can't get served. They, they and he's can't give him the papers. Yeah. The Flash 12-year-old granted order of protection against Ezra Miller as more disturbing allegations surface. There's a quote from him, I think, in here. That I think I think Whoa. it's I think it's in there. It's super funny. Wait, wait, wait. Start it's at alleged, the beginning of that paragraph. It's alleged that on February 2nd, okay, the site reports that a mother and her 12-year-old child have been granted a temporary harassment prevention order against Ezra Miller following accusations that they menaced them and a neighbor and acted inappropriate inappropriately toward the non-binary youngster. Oh Jesus. So they're they're cannibalizing each other now. It's alleged that on February 2nd, the trio was spending time with Miller. When the mother mentioned traveling with her tribe of people, that led to an outburst from the actor who accused her of cultural appropriation before claiming that the board game they were playing, Parcheesi, has Rastafarian roots. What the fuck is happening? When the neighbor, who is half black, asked what he was talking about, Ezra explodes and started screaming directly into my face, the person recalls. They said, you don't even know what the frick you're talking about. What did you say to me? What did you just say to me? Then they opened up their jacket. They had this like big Sherpa jacket (laughs) and they opened up one side of the jacket. You could see a gun and they said, talking like that could get you into a really serious situation. He's fucking crazy. He's the the Joker. (laughs) Things only got worse from here. Miller claiming to hold power over the 11 year old child, suggesting they would guide them. The mom understandably had something to say about that, but the actor turned on the woman who dresses goth. Oh, (laughs) Jeez. What are what are we reading this right now? Hilarious. Accused her of being a vampire and witch, asking, "Do you want to drink my blood? Do you?" Uh, whatever kind of drug he's on must be insane. <laughs> oh, my, okay. It, it's even worse. It's at this point we should probably warn you that this alleged clash takes an even more upsetting turn because <laughs> the site explains that Miller then started pestering the child with compliments, moving their chair closer to them before uncomfortably hugging them and touching their hips. The Justice League star requested the 11-year-old follow them on Instagram and suggested they would acquire them several horses the child could help care for on their Vermont farm. So he there's a goth, a non-binary Vermont farmer hanging out with Ezra Miller playing Parcheesi. 
the fuck is happening? This is a Chappelle skit or something. They, they automatically were just weirdly drawn to me and kept talking about how they love my outfit, love my style, and kept going on and on about how it was great. The child recalls in an interview with the site. It was really uncomfortable. I was really nervous. I was scared to be around them after he'd yelled at my mother and she was crying. Oh, shit. He called him he. he she she yeah, changed from yeah. they to he. Needless to say, this is gross. And while they are just accusations at this point, Miller's role as the Flash surely has to be scrapped. Well, are you guys going to see the movie? After this? Sure. Why not? Got to see what happens. I mean, that's what they're betting on is like, are people going to not go because of this? Well, here's the thing. Like with all the other stuff you've seen, like with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp and all the other stuff that people have pulled, like how is he not different. fired yet? This He's is, not this fired is yet worse. because the movie has already been filmed entirely. Mm-hmm. But, but is this star. true that he started like grabbing and trying to touch an 11 year old bro that's what i was talking about earlier is i read something like there was a another thing beyond that where some they like asked him somehow like what happened and he said like this child would have been lucky to have been guided by me or something like that it's some weird shit like, what? <laughs> flash star ezra miller responds to latest allegations with memes suggesting they're in another universe the first features a caption saying, you cannot touch me. I am in another universe. The next reads, message from another dimension, while a third shows a cartoon figure throwing up and the caption, me remembering how I was nice when I should have said, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Oh, my God. Uh, final one is a rambling quote talking about negative people, hidden intent, and hidden enemies. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, but the only reason they would ever take him away is not for integrity. It's because uh, they're going to lose money. They think they're going to lose money. Are you, do you guys want to review that movie? Michael Keaton is in it. So I want to go see it for that. Is this enough to make you say, I'm not going to watch this. I'll go see it. But I mean, I think I need to see what happens with Ezra Miller over the next couple months. (laughs) Because so, okay. they can't reshoot the movie. Think about it. Imagine if Robert Pattinson had had to be replaced. If you this comes out, the whole movie. if this comes out that it's true, like gets confirmed, and if he continues on this path, I don't want to fucking see it. Fuck him. Okay. And fuck Warner Brothers too. Honestly, fuck him. Like they're cutting one person, not cutting other people. Okay, they cut Johnny Depp in five seconds because of allegations from Amber Heard. <laughs> Okay. Amber Heard acted crazy. They didn't really seem to do anything to her. Now they have someone who's being accused of fucking touching a kid and like he's assaulting people and running from the police. And they're, no, fuck. Remember when it was just him throwing like a chair or a table at someone? Now it's all this. He he spiraled. (laughs) He flashed a gun over (laughs) Parcheesi. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So wait, out of curiosity, think of the entire cast of Justice League. So it's Ezra Miller, Gal Gadot, Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill. Uh, Jason Momoa and who, the guy who played Cyborg. We've Ray Fisher. Yeah, Ray Fisher. Fisher. Cyborg went down first. Yeah, the whole set. thing has actually been full of just terrible controversy. So we read all that stuff about uh, about Cyborg and all that other stuff. There was something I remember you reading us about Gal Gadot getting into an argument about like starting a fitness channel or something. Remember that? No, yeah, it wasn't vaguely. an argument. It was. Yeah, the, it was like it was the Josh head of Weaver Paramount Plus who brought her in and then was like, maybe you'll be the next like fitness person she was like I- insane <laughs> I, I i remember reading stuff like wasn't ben affleck like having a big alcoholism binge or something on the set he was struggling with alcoholism while he was playing batman so like he every, also divorced his wife I think. a majority of the because i can't really think of anything for henry cavill or jason henry Momoa. cavill had has major contract negotiation disputes oh there's that okay what and about he, jason Momoa? he may not even come back like we don't even know if he's coming back Jason Momoa is still in it, as far as I can <laughs> the, the entire cast of Justice League, excluding Justice him, is just I mean, going. Nuts. Wonder Woman is in it, or like still, still cast. But the last movie sucked so bad. If they blow the third one, I think, I think it's over for that. So she basically had one good movie and one good cameo. All said, you know done. what's interesting? <laughs> it's like, like Marvel and Jesus. Star Wars have built up so much goodwill that they can skate on shit. But like. <laughs> DC, like when it crashes, people are like, you're fucking off. To be fair, though, oh my God. Warner Brothers and DC, they don't have good movies. I mean, no, they have they like don't. a couple, but they really no. kind of shit the bed a lot. But that's my point where it's like, for somehow you, everyone's able to acknowledge their flaws. Well, because a lot of people want to hate on it. Yeah. Not, not, not saying that it doesn't deserve it, but 
you know, they ignore. Problem is Shang-Chi, even though it's a bad movie, doesn't offend you. That's the part of it. Whereas a DC movie, it tends to be like over the top weird, like Joker dressed as Jesus and like weird shit. Not to mention, I don't think I read in the article about Aquafina going nuts on an island, throwing stuff at people. Like, for, for do you have like the Shang-Chi? Joker news in here? Uh, Joker news? Oh, yeah, Joker. Joaquin no, Phoenix's actually. Joker is getting a sequel. Yeah, that, yeah, Ooh. that didn't show up actually. A musical. Um, the thing about like what? Shang-Chi is that if you shut your brain off, you'll walk out being like it's a good movie. You have to really actually think about it to to be like, oh wait, this movie actually sucks. These movies, you don't have to think about it to see that they're bad. Um, <laughs> And then on top of everything else that's going on outside, like Gal Gadot also did the uh, that that one song, remember? Oh yeah, the the COVID the Instagram thing. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, like it's just imagine been one bad yeah. thing. <laughs> Let me think about it. She did that. She had a the one of the worst sequels ever. Uh, didn't register Justice League at all. Like if not, she was kind of annoying. If anything, um, Henry Cavill may like had a movie people didn't really like had another movie people didn't really like i think man of steel was good but batman or superman was pretty much not good um and then he's like up in the air he had, we haven't seen him in a long time he showed up in justice league the whole mustache gate thing uh i mean i guess nego- the witcher stuff recently but the witcher stuff too but like contract negotiation we don't even know who the superman is in this universe really ben affleck with alcoholism and basically saying that he's done playing the character being too old anyway there's already a new batman that's not even connected to the universe but like he's already been replaced the flash and all of this shit uh everything that went down with joss whedon and the cyborg actor forget his name um jason jason momoa has been okay they made a shazam movie and never brought him back ever (laughs) like we don't even know they're doing a black adam movie that looks generic as fuck i mean yeah it's floundering they're only their only thing that's working right now is that Michael Keaton is coming back for, for my generation. That's it. That's all they got. So Michael Keaton can fry his superhero career in not one movie, but two movies now. And he is going to probably have a bad movie and I'll buy the action figure. And like, that'll be it for that too. They can, they can sell the flash and Morbius in a box set. You realize that he's coming back and he's going to be in Batgirl too. Right. That's what they're saying. Like yeah. the Flash is going to like rearrange the universes. It's fucked. Um, all right. They're gonna edit it so he just dies at the end of rearranging the universes. So we'll, yeah, we'll talk about. Shit makes the universe of the boys look tame. We'll talk about the Joker because uh, I, I didn't even see the article. So um, apparently, Lady Gaga is going to be Harley Quinn. Yeah. Joker Two is going to be a musical. Yes. I actually like this idea just based on the fact like having an actual drama called about Joker 2 makes no sense. There's no sequel to that story. So it's just going to be like a wild, crazy thing. And you know, you just take it for what it is. That's it. I, I saw this tweet where it was like everyone who was excited for the Joker sequel is losing it because they're angry that it's a musical. And everyone who wasn't excited for a Joker <laughs> sequel is hyped because it's a musical. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So Disney Plus has announced that a Wonder Man TV series is coming to Disney Who the Plus. fuck is Wonder Man? So he, he's a decently known character. He was supposed to be played, I believe, by Nathan Fillion in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, but it got scrapped. So right now we don't know who's playing him, um, but it's coming from the guy who made Shang-Chi. I can't believe they gave him another job. Ugh. Well, it's just... Imagine uh, the stuff that, okay, I'll use Morbius as an example. So we all know that Morbius sucks, but the producers don't know that. So when they see people going nuts with all the memes and they re-release the movie thinking, oh, wow, people are going to love this, and it flopped, that's a perfect example. We know that Shang-Chi is not that great, but other people still think it's great, and they see that and they're like, wow, th- this must be a really popular franchise. Let's give I mean, the director another shot. With what Kevin Feige said about like Sam Raimi and, and it being so easy, I would have to imagine on some level he would have recognize like i feel like he had to have been talking about shang chi and how like it's just a bad movie i think he knows i think he can't control it because there's too many projects happening at once he can't sit there in the writing room and be like write better like he goes with whatever they get but 
you know, they replaced the, um, the director and writer for Captain Marvel. So like he knew that. And I'm, I'm just shocked that they gave him, they gave that creative team something else. Um, so Sam Williams is Wonder Man. He is a villain turned hero. Zemo gave Simon superpowers by bombarding him with ionic rays, but included a failsafe that meant his underling would need regular treatments from the villain to stop his body from breaking down and killing him. So he's, he poses as a hero to the Avengers. Um, he, and then he came clean and refused to betray the Avengers. He died shortly after being introduced and was remembered as a hero and came back. Uh, some formidable powers. He's a powerhouse. Uh, he's ultimately as powerful as Thor. Okay, so is everybody, if, depending on who's writing it. He's essentially immortal and invulnerable. Wow. He can fly and shoot energy beams. Wow. So it's like Superman. Like He's like every other character we've seen, basically. It's um, fucking white bread. He would later grow mentally unstable. Uh, formidable in hand-to-hand combat. So he, he's, yeah, he's essentially Captain Marvel. That's what they said. Which that's mentally unstable. Me. A complicated family. Okay. Um, he fell into the hands of his older brother Eric. Eric became the Grim Reaper. Okay, I'm just gonna skip that. <laughs> um, he is an Avenger. He's friends with. Beast. What is that picture? He's friends with Beast. Beast is about to rape him. <laughs> um, he formed a team of villains called the Revengers. With D Man, <laughs> who's that Dick Man? <laughs> Anti Venom, Virtue, Captain Ultra. Oh my God, this is so stupid. I, once the MCU gets to that point, I am out. I'm telling you right now. Um, Hollywood Hero. Okay, this might be the most interesting thing. Um, he moved to the West Coast and found great success as an actor and stuntman. That would be the series, is he's an actor superhero. That would be the only interesting thing he could do. Isn't that basically what The Boys is, though? Are they actors? Yeah. They act in their own movies all the time. Okay. They're, they're public icons. They're celebrities. Um, George St. Pierre says that he's going to come back as the truck 100%. He always comes in and in the out of things. You know what I mean. <laughs> he's going to come back with a vengeance next time for sure. He's going to bring his brigade and he's going to be angry. Yeah, I don't know if I believe He always it. comes in and out of things, if you know what I mean. <laughs> what he's really saying is like, yeah, they just like bring him in and then get him out. Like he was in I Winter mean, Soldier for like two episodes. He was wasted. The whole I mean everyone was wasted. Um the Show Flash was a waste. The Flash finally really resolves big arrow series finale cliffhanger teasing Diggle's Green Lantern future. I was just curious. So did they make him a Green Lantern? He wasn't ready as a Green Lantern before, but he is now. Um, so they don't even specifically mention it in the show. The Green Lantern Corps is never directly referenced, but the insinuation is clear. Uh, let's see. Wait, what? Are you guys reading this? Yeah, I uh, he chooses not to. So, but it starts with he wasn't ready before, but is now. With that, he gets a glimpse of the cosmos and the sort of possibilities it holds for him. The Green Lantern Corps is never directly referenced, but the insinuation is clear. Alas, he decides that heading into outer space isn't for him. Why? Why would he, dis- especially as it would mean leaving his family behind? Diggle then throws the box aside and closes it for good. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what a clickbait article right there. That is crazy that he would be like ready, but then just doesn't do it. Flash is still going on. I can't believe that. Yeah, I stopped watching it for season one. Uh, Venom 3 star Tom Hardy shares first look at screenplay and teases last dance for Eddie Brock. Yeah, because he's tired of it. So he, he showed a picture that says Venom 3. But so I guess he helped write it too, story by. So if it's his last dance, so I mean, we've heard that it's going to be like another stupid uh, symbiote battle. Are they yeah. really not going to do Venom versus Spider Man? Maybe they take, maybe the, this is why it's the last dance because they want to do Venom versus Spider Man. 
And so they're like, this is right. last dance for Eddie Brock. I know. And the point is that Eddie Brock is gone. They're going to do a new Venom like in the MCU. Yeah, maybe they'll just copy the persona over and not have Eddie Brock and just have him be in the MCU. Um, I don't know where they're getting that. He says last dance. I don't see that. I, uh, that just means like he's not coming back, right? Jessica Jones and Supernatural writer to serve as showrunner on Netflix's Power Rangers TV series. Is it live action or is it animated? Um, Cause that just looks like concept art. Uh, let's see. Um, Austin St. John, the original Red Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, reportedly arrested for PPP-related wire fraud. No! <laughs> One of my heroes. I have a picture of him when I was a kid. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Um, it's all coming apart. Everyone we know is going nuts. I don't know. Why is your name Adrian with 10 million N's? Adrian. <laughs> so waiting for someone to notice that. <laughs> I did notice it. I just was like, okay, I don't know what he's doing. Um, I don't know. Does it? I doesn't say live action, does it? I I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. Like, I I kind of got invested in Ultra, uh, not Ultron, in Voltron. I don't know if I could get invested in a Power Rangers series. I you love didn't Power even Rangers. Watch the best part of Voltron, did you? I I started watching it. I don't know. I could. Did you get I, to the prince? Yeah. No, I got I got to. Uh, did I got you to get to Lotor. the point where the prince lost his shit? No, I haven't okay, watched well, Voltron in ages. You're like one season off from like watch that and then turn it off. Go to the end of the Prince's it's, it's arc. It's like Castlevania. Watch the first two seasons and then leave. Yeah, I'm serious. Watch the Prince's arc and then don't watch the other five seasons. Wait, five seasons? It's fucking gigantic and it's awful. It's just meanders. The last about. time I was, okay, the last time I heard anything about Voltron was I saw the episode release at Comic-Con in like 2018 or whatever. And then... Th- that was like season two, and then they they had see how many four more. I don't think they know if it's live action or not. Okay, I mean, you know, would... the thing about the Power Rangers is a lot of it had influence on me for the uh, the graphic novel, mm-hmm. because that was the first time where like they each had their individual colors, and if you look, oh, this is yeah. You remember the movie we all reviewed? Ever there's I didn't eight mind seasons. Movie. Eight, Jesus Christ. Like I've been looking at. I remember action. that movie. What you just brought up that. Yeah. Remember we reviewed mind. that, and you said like the biggest selling point was like the like they duplex the monster or something halfway. No, no, no the that's movie. the newest one. I think yeah. the one he just brought up was one of the originals. Oh, three was, zero. I, oh, the, I've been looking at the, the action um, figures. Yeah, action figures. I'm not gonna buy it, but like, there's something about it. Even though they're very like simple, there's it's something cool. about it. It's I cool. Don't know. The White Ranger, the Green Ranger, Billy was gay, <laughs> Kimberly was hot, Trini died in a car accident, Zach was black, and the Red Ranger was the best. <laughs> that, that, that description. <laughs> Tommy was tough. I, I always preferred Red Ranger over Green, uh, but I remember that was a big rivalry. I mean, there's something about it. I got to be honest. Like, there's something about it. I, like I remember the White when Ranger. When bro. I was growing up, everyone loved the they Red Ranger. Somewhere. I loved the Black Ranger. Wasn't there like a Gold Ranger at one point? White Ranger, yeah. They've, that. they've had all kinds of stupid shit. Yeah. I used to have an action figure of the White yeah, Ranger. I liked the White like Ranger. A, I was a he, big fan of the White he Ranger. He had like a, a motorcycle that had like a helicopter blade on the bottom of it that I loved. This set, I like it, but this set is like five hundred dollars, and I don't like it that much. Um. Also, their bodies are a little weird. You can sort of see. Yeah, like, three zero is really tip. It's they're normally really good with body stuff. They're not good with faces, but yeah. But look at his, look at his like, look, look at the Red Rangers like shoulders and traps. He almost doesn't have shoulders. Weird. Uh, Where where's his shoulders? Maybe you yeah. can shift them. Maybe they have like a butterfly joint or something. You can shift them. Maybe. And I've had I've seen some people bought the other set because it was like some other version that people somebody made, and mm. the helmets on that one are better. But the bodies here are better, so they actually spent like a thousand dollars and put them together. Um, if I ever see Morphin Power Rangers, deal, I might go for it. But yeah, there's something about the colors that I like. Um, okay, did you guys see? Yeah, I didn't oh, see the name? Oh, Ryan Gosling is Ken. 
Yeah, I saw this. I mean, I feel like he looks a little old. I've been hearing bits and pieces about the Barbie movie. Oh my god! But yeah, dude, he has his name on his underwear. Yeah, so he doesn't forget. Nah. <laughs> so his boyfriend knows who he's fucking. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's you know it's something. I I don't think it's gonna be a bad movie, honestly. We'll see. Equalizer three. I don't know if you guys care, but I've seen the other. Denzel ones. is. Uh, Joining back up with Dakota Fanning for Equalizer. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But is she going to be like an assassin too now or something? I don't fucking know. What is the? Equal- I've seen trailers and stuff. There, like it's John Wick. It's just it's not John Wick. Crap, it's uh, yeah. it's Taken, but it's Denzel Washington. Oh. And Man on Fire was also like John Wick, and the only thing John Wick brings to it is like karate. But the yeah. whole like gunman guy like going on a rampage. Leon the professional, I remember, was a good one. I haven't seen that, but I've heard of that. Uh, <laughs> Maisie Williams thought Game of Thrones sex eight season eight sex scene was a prank because she assumed Arya was queer. <laughs> okay, where did she make that assumption from? Well, I mean, because they never really like paired her with a guy at all. Wasn't well, that because she was a kid? Yeah, and so I mean, I could see why she was gay she she never seemed interested in anybody um so and then like she really wasn't around women except for that one girl who tried to kill her so the way like for whatever her name was yeah she thought it was a prank they're like i thought i said yo good one and the showrunners were like no we haven't done that this year oh they haven't done a prank this year Many fans were under the impression that she was gay. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. There wasn't anything that suggested that. Maybe it was because she spent the majority of the series with short hair. I never really thought about who she wants to have sex with at all, to be honest. Yeah, I didn't really give a shit. Game of Thrones was not about that. (laughs) She's one of those that was like great casting when she was young. Like she had the right look, but she didn't really age. Like she looks kind of weird. Older (laughs) person. You know, she was in the New Mutants. I, I didn't. I never saw it, but I heard yeah, she I was pretty it. bad in it. Tim Sale, artist for Batman: The Long Halloween, Superman for all seasons, Daredevil, Yellow, has died. So, oh. Batman: The Long Halloween, the artist. I mean, that this is actually a pretty big loss. That's sad. I own a couple of his books. Sixty-six. You know, not to quote Sopranos, but he was a fucking kid. Uh. Yeah, he. Uh, that's not that old. No. But he was a good artist. Did they say what he died of? Um, hospitalized with severe health issues. It's too bad. Mm-hmm. All right. So we have you can cross out Days of Future Past. Two more to go. Yeah, yep. two more. Now we're in the we're in the end game now, boys. We have roughly twenty movies. I don't know that we're going to watch them all, but twenty movies, not counting any of the new ones. So twenty more episodes. That's only how many? That's five months. Yeah, it's not a long time. So like likely six months with how many new movies are coming out, mm. and then we will uh, see what this becomes. <laughs> Indeed. It's gonna be a stocks podcast after. <laughs> after that. Yeah. I don't. The pro, I don't like. I feel like we'll come up with some other movies to watch to like, just wrap things up. I don't mind just doing the news. Neither do I. Yeah, neither do I. Except that I'm not really excited for anything. So that's the part of me that's like, we read the news and I'm just like shitting on everything the whole time. <laughs> yeah, but that's it's fun. All terrible. A Wonder Man. We're gonna do a Wonder Man reviews. Like we know what it is. It's gonna suck. I mean, yeah. to be fair, that's, that's the fun surprises. part about this. Shitting on half the What'd stuff. What'd you say, Kia? Miss Marvel was better. Like, I didn't really see I that. See, okay, look, it's it's the best one so far, but I'm also not like blown away. I'm not like, I have to watch the next episode. It's, but it's not like. It's I, not I, bad. From, from episode one to two, like in between, I was kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see where they go. I didn't have a problem with it, is my point. Like, even though some of it's a little stupid. But the other ones are really stupid, <laughs> like really stupid. So like they're knocking it out of the park, I think. 
Mm. Um, all right. I think that's it. I'll see you guys next time. No smart ass. Nah, not this oh, week. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> nah, 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 not this week. I'll remind <laughs> you if there's one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Later. You, see you later, dog. What up?